So it's finally time to say goodbye to Clement, Bonnie, and Serena as Ash is heading home to Pallet Town, and we must also say goodbye to Serena who is going to the Hoenn region. <laughs> Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Benzel, and welcome to another Pokemon X, Y, and Z anime discussion. In this particular video, I will be reviewing both the Lee, the finale, of the X, Y, and Z series, the main series with Ash, Clemon, Bonnie, and Serena, as well as the XYZ Legend, simply because I don't believe the XYZ Legend episode deserves to be reviewed on its own episode, or its own video, so that's why it's going to be in both of these things. So anyway, let's of course go ahead and talk about the finale. It was great for what it was, uh, the dynamic of the characters, the understanding of Dedenne running away, which was a lot better than what I thought, uh, the Serena kissing Ash, uh, you know, a lot of people say that it was just simply implied, but there was a kiss scene that needs to be acknowledged, and a farewell to the supporting cast, all the characters that we've seen, not all of them, but the major players that we've seen in the past did get some sort of farewell, not, not counting like gym leaders or champions or something, The not those type of characters, but you know, I'll talk about that later what I'm talking about. I, I don't know if this was actually the best finale because I didn't really like all that time that was on the flashbacks within this episode and I will address that later but for the most part it was good for what it was and it was definitely better than Iris and Silen and perhaps better than the May and Max finale at the end of Battle Frontier. Not sure about Misty or Dawn but since the dynamic of Clement, Serena, and Bonnie, and Ash was better than the other group dynamics, you know, it, like how Ash was a good companion to all three of the other characters, you know, Misty and Brock may have had a friendship of sorts, but it was mostly just Ash and Brock and Ash and Misty, kind of like with Dawn, it was mostly Dawn and Ash and Ash and Brock and Brock and Dawn didn't have really much to go forward. I would say third generation with May was, as well as Silent and Iris, they were more closely related. I mean, I would say that in regards to third generation, Brock and Max had more of a relationship to each other than I would say like Dawn and Brock or something like that but then you know Iris and Silence seemed like they got well together or whatever but I still say for the dynamic that was the X Y and Z gang I do have to say it was better than the other companions because I really didn't like Iris at all and Silent was okay but not the best you know Brock was okay, but kind of boring. You know, the problem was Brock really never did anything. May was okay. Max was annoying. Misty was more annoying, but she was still okay and stuff. So, but I thoroughly liked the X, Y, and Z gang. So that's definitely why I think, at least in regards to the companions and the relationships and the ending of saying farewell to each other and the conclusions that they had, I definitely would say that in regards to that, the X, Y, and Z, the X, Y, or the sixth generation anime did it the best, in my opinion. So there's a quick synopsis here, and of course there will be some images around here. So, Serena and Ash get ready to say goodbye. Bonnie doesn't feel like eating because she doesn't want to say goodbye. Uh, well, she doesn't want the adventures to end. Ash and Serena specifically say goodbye to Sycamore, Avon, and Marin. And I say this only because I doubt Clement and Bonnie, Bonnie won't run into these characters. May, may, uh, I'm assuming that... Alon and Marin are still somewhere in the Kalos region look, uh, looking for 
keystones or megastones or something like that. So it's possible that Clement and Bonnie have more of a chance to run into each other. So that's why I'm not completely saying that I don't think Silent or Clement and Bonnie exactly said goodbye. But who knows? Who knows? I just think it's a lot more likely that Alon and Marin would run into Clement and Bonnie more than Ash and Serena, who are in different regions, personally. So, of course, Alon is looking for a keystone, apparently, and Alon will start over without a mega bracelet and start fresh like Ash is going to, or Ash has planned, because in the previous episode, Ash said he was going to go to Pallet Town and start all over again, because that's what he does. Uh, a, a personal character trait of Ash that was added to his character because of the new generations of wanting to start fresh over again as a way to correlate with the games and stuff. So, just quickly, insert Team Rocket and Giovanni and Soul Rock and Lunatone, implying Sun and Moon, but otherwise don't care about Team Rocket, outside of them letting Giovanni know how they helped defeat Team Flare for Team Rocket. You know, it's like, whatever. But I, I did like the the Soul Rock and Lunatone, and of course you'll see the image of that implying Sun and Moon. That was a really nice touch for what it was. So then, of course, at the airport, Serena is getting ready to leave, so everyone, including the Pokemon, get to say goodbye. Dedene, you know, the last one to really get a goodbye so with everyone else, is, like, really confused out of everyone, unsure of how to handle it, and doesn't really want to say goodbye because it really doesn't understand, I believe. Or it, it's beginning to understand, and it doesn't like what it's uh, what it's thinking in regards to saying goodbye, or however you want to look at it. And it it, it, it honestly looks like even more heartbreaking with Denene than it was like Piplup or any other sad farewells with sad people or whatever. But then again, it, it, it's probably because Denene is actually more likable than those characters, Zidane is definitely more likable than Don's Piplup and Max or any other character that may have had issues or whatever, so that might be why I preferred it a little bit more. So then, of course, Bonnie makes a passion speech to Zidane, saying things like she's going to be a better performer, trainer, than, than Serena, beat Clement at the gym and get a gym badge, Ash beating Ash, all with Dedene as her partner. Uh, Dedene uh, realizes that this is okay and his understanding of this situation and reunites with Bonnie and everyone can go their ha happy little merry way. Then it's time for Serena to say goodbye and she says she'll see Ash later, you know, when, when they're like older or however you want to in for what Serena was saying, and then before completely leaving, she comes back from the escalator and kisses Ash, and she and the escalator pulls her away. We cut to Ash momentarily being stunned before falling back to his character and then blushing like crazy, and of course, you'll see that everyone was like blushing, come on, Bonnie, Dedene, <laughs> Pikachu, they were all like, what? What's going on? So then, of course, Serena leaves, and then Ash and Clement have an undecisive battle between Pikachu versus Bunnelby as a quick nod to the first episode where Clement and Ash battled each other. Ash leaves, everyone shows up, and the main cast get the flashbacks. It starts with Serena, I believe, uh, being in Hoenn and then flashbacking to her adventures and her important moments, and then Clement, then Bonnie, and then finally Ash. But also during this, we also see Shauna, Trevor, Tierno, Alon, Marin, Gudra, and Greninja. And those are the moments that I'm talking about, the supporting cast that actually got a farewells. Because we saw them, Serena, uh, Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor were in the force helping out Pokemon as a result of the Team Flare arc. Marin and Alon looking for a Keystone or Megastone or whatever the circumstance was there. We got to finally see good gate finally got to say goodbye fully to Gudra and Greninja in regards to this series. And, of course, we saw Greninja with, without its Ash Greninja form. 
no comment. Um, and then it ends with Ash on the plane, as I've said, with flashbacks. And then the ending starts with the flashbacks with credits. And then, of course, Ash in Pallet Town at night entering his house. And then there's that message that I can't remember. But I but I think it, it was, I think it said, to each our own way or something like that. I'll put like a text correction, correction or a picture correction of that. And that was pretty much the end of the episode. So as I said before, it was a really good finale for what we got. Like I said, I'm not too happy about the flashbacks, but only because I feel like it wasted a good chunk of time that could have been devoted for actual scenes or whatever. You know, even if the part of the flashbacks did kind of melt into the ending with credits, as I've said, but otherwise, I guess the flashbacks were okay. I just didn't like them being in the episode, but I had nothing wrong with the flashbacks themselves, just the concept of the flashbacks. So then, like I said earlier, Dedene running away and crying made sense because Dedene has kind of like a naive personality when it comes to these huge momental uh, moments or whatever to these situations, you know, and we, we've kind of saw this on a smaller scale with Gudra. When Gudra would like be left or released or whatever, Dedene would freak out and, you know, and be all upset and everything like that. And that was understandable. But, but what we're talking about is such an extreme scale of saying goodbye because technically Bonnie with Clement and Dedene could easily go to the wetlands. Serena and Ash are going to an entirely different region. So it's not like that they can just visit. So I think that's what hit Dedene so hard was that this was really goodbye for a long period of time. And it wasn't just simple, oh, let's just go visit someone in the wetlands after a few weeks it was no it's like going to be like months or whatever before you may actually see or communicate with the characters or whatever in the same dynamic you did when you were adventuring them throughout the whole entire region so that was definitely more understandable so i definitely have to say it, uh, props to Dedene's voice actor bonnie's voice actor and the way it was written it felt a lot more understandable and comfortable based on everything else we've gone through. I'm not saying that Piplup didn't have a reason to be upset at the end of fourth generation, but I never truly liked Piplup, so it came off more as annoying to me. That's why I didn't like it, while the Dene is actually more likable, so I think that's what it was or whatever. So anyway, let's move on. The kiss was technically awesome from a objective point of view, but I honestly don't care about shipping at all. So it was irrelevant to me. And, and you know, the issue is I've seen people trying to dismiss this kissing scene. And I'm like, w why? Like, I know you don't like shipping. You don't like Serena and Ash or whatever, but it was pretty clearly a kiss. Even someone as neutral as me who doesn't care one way or the other about shipping, it was clearly a kiss. And then people were like, well, Ash wasn't affected or whatever. He wasn't blushing. He wasn't becoming like Brock, who, <laughs> excuse me, but <laughs> has an orgasm or whatever for a getting kissed by a girl, you know, or, or whatever the circumstances may be that wasn't Ash. And the thing is, Ash's reaction fit with XY and X, Y, and Z, Ash, the mature Ash, or whatever, because X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, I do believe, was the most mature Ash that we've ever got, you know, I mean, people would say that Diamond and Pearl, or fourth generation anime, was mature in their way, but Ash still, while being competent and being mature, still had those slight immature aspects about him, but when, but in serious moments in regards to the sixth gen, Ash was definitely mature. Like during the Team Flare arc, Ash was definitely a mature character during that moment. You know, he, he wasn't like sparkling at science things or whatever. So Ash's reaction of being stunned and his eyes sparkling for a moment before he like smiled and stood 
proudly or whatever in regards to that, that fit Ash. I don't know why the people who are against shipping or whatever wanted Ash to have his nose bleeding or something like that and steam coming out of his ears and nose and stuff like probably Brock would or whatever. You know, it, Ash isn't Brock. Brock would have done those things. I don't think Ash would, especially not 6th generation anime Ash. <laughs> Maybe Alolan Ash or whatever probably would react similarly to Brock, but I feel like it made sense, so I do think it was really important. But that's whatever, and what I have to say about that. So that's really all I can say about this episode. I think I've said pretty much everything that there needs to be said. Um, and it looks like we're heading off to the XY and specials. And then after that, after this week's episode, it will be Pokemon Sun and Moon. So of course, let's go into the XY and XYZ Legend, the Legend of XYZ episode review, which is this one. Okay, so I have a question. Why does this episode exist? I, that That's a real honest question that I'm really wondering about. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that they couldn't have produced this episode and perhaps uploaded it to YouTube or some Japanese website for the world to enjoy, but why was this episode made to spend an entire week on in syndication of the television series like, why the no Thursday of November 3rd was why this episode was created, you know? Honestly, I feel like, take the upcoming Silen, yes, Silen is showing up, I don't know if I mentioned that in my previous videos, apologies about that, Silen, Clement, Bonnie episode, or whatever, why not move that up? And actually have a Naruto special for the two one-hour specials that will be coming up for Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. I would have been perfectly fine with a break last week. Or even this particular week. For, you know, the two one-hour specials for Sun and Moon anime. Because... You know, on the 17th, there will be a one-hour special, and on the 24th, there will be a one-hour special. So, yeah, you know, it might have been in the best interest for Pokemon if they took a break, week break before Sun and Moon anime, you know, to sort of make up for the fact that Pokemon is going to have two one-hour specials, because I'm afraid of all those breaks that are going to happen after the anime starts. So, that's all I can say in regards to that, because... Literally, the only thing that this episode was, and the reason why I'm being very critical here, and this episode can basically be summed up with, and this is the short vernia, this is the short version of the special. Eva Tall is death and destruction, Xerneas is life and revival, and Zygarde is the order between the two. As in, you don't want to screw with one or the other because Zygarde will get involved. And that's basically the short version. Now, this is the long version and the synopsis, and I'll put some images in regards to that. So anyway, let's go into this. Sycamore and Alexa learn about a legend of a boy and a girl who are afraid for their village from the evil, destructive evil tall, who ends up killing the boy's talon flame. Yeah, I... I Literally, that was the last time we saw the boy's talent flame. The archer boy that rode a go go and had a talent flame, the moment Evil Tall hit talent flame, was the last time we see it. In. That was pretty much the end of talent flame. And his girlfriend, sister, or friend was also killed, and the boy was understandably upset about this and wanted to change things. Then Olympia's ancestor, really the only interesting about this thing was Olympia's ancestor, shows up and then talks about how Xerneas can restore life and bring life to the world or whatever and might be able to reverse the effects of Xerneas, the, the effects Evotal did to the girlfriend of the boy. I'm going to just assume that it's his girlfriend or 
something of that nature. If I'm wrong, oh well. I, I didn't have subs when I made the notes. So, so yeah, Xerneas can restore the girl's life potentially. So then, of course, on a year, on a long journey of many years, the the now man, the adult man, finds Xerneas's life tree that we got in like X or whatever. You know how evil tall becomes a cocoon but Xerneas is like a tree so of course Xerneas is a tree and is being burned by morons because they think it's destroying the world around them with the poisoned air or something like that it, it might be somehow at fault or whatever but I think it is mostly evil tall possibly and Xerneas was unfortunately unable to do anything in its form so then, of course, Zygarde shows up, and this is the order that I was referring to when I said the short summary. Zygarde was not happy that Xerneas was being burned by humans and came by and gave its little judgment, you know, in regards to that. Kind of think of Xerneas and Evil Tall like the rulers of the world or whatever, but Zygarde stands above that to make sure that the rules, rulers of the world are not unfairly attacked or whatever. So then, of course, after that, Xerneas becomes back into its Xerneas animal form, or um, animal form, I guess, or Pokemon form, the deer-antlered Pokemon. And, you know, the, the man that we saw in the beginning was like, hey, we got to, can you please save someone that I care about? And and Xernia said basically basically ran away, indicating that humans were not ready for whatever Xernius was capable of, and was not happy in regards to that. So yeah, Xernius was not happy about being burned. So it just decided to say, nope, bye humans. Look what you did to me. I'm not going to be friendly for you, even if you weren't a part of me being burned. Because Pokemon have that problem. Uh, there's a group of people who hate a Pokemon, and suddenly that Pokemon hates all humans or whatever. So, Xerneas runs away, and then during the next few years or whatever, the man is trying to replant what Evoltal did to the um, planet or whatever, and was just doing that, trying to restore the the way that it was before being naturing to the world or whatever. Then Xerneas shows up and restores life to the trees. Those seeds actually grow into adults and life has been restored thanks to Xerneas because I believe Xerneas at that point realized what this human was doing and maybe Xerneas was watching him to see if he was worthy. Unfortunately, I'm, while I'm not entirely sure why Xerneas refused to bring life to the girl, the, the boy's girlfriend or whatever, the man's girlfriend. I think it was either too late, too much time had passed. Like in the sixth, uh, for the first sixth generation movie where Pikachu basically died from Evil Tall and all those people technically died from Evil Tall. Xerneas was able to quickly restore life to them before turning into that eternal tree that Xerneas becomes to when it's slumberous and restoring its energy or whatever. So I think it was either too late or Xerneas no longer had the power to restore life to this girl because he already spent, or Xerneas spent too much of it already trying to restore the world. So then afterwards, years later, at the end of the boy, man, old man's life, um, his, his granddaughter or someone close to him is talking to him and he's like basically accepted that there's really nothing he can do about the girl. She's gone forever and accepts life and I'm assuming dies at that particular point. He could just be sleeping, maybe. But I think maybe at that point it's dead and that's all Alexa and Sycamore were talking about. And that's basically the end of the episode. So yeah, it was like, we already knew all of this. I don't know why we needed an episode about this. So, and I say here in my notes, this special was a unique take, a, a realistic take of past times in relation to 
the first XY movie with Zygarde thrown in regards to order, as in not letting humans d uh, completely destroy Xerneas as it's under un slumbering in its sleep trying to restore its energy. So, so I feel like this this episode would have been okay if it was just uploaded to YouTube or a Japanese website as some sort of free knowledge of things that we already technically knew about. So it wasn't really all that interesting or whatever, and so that's pretty much all I can say about that episode. Uh, I, I am going to say it wasn't necessarily a bad episode, because I've seen far worse episodes in Pokemon. I just think it wasn't relevant and kind of a waste of time. I would have definitely pref would have preferred a break so that we could get ready for Sun and Moon anime, as I've said before. So now let's talk about what's coming up in the future. And I'm assuming that there's going to be a more relevant episode. And of course, that's Silent, as I've said, coming back and sharing a special with Clement and Bonnie. So that's everything in regards to that. And I look at, I actually look forward to this Silent special. You know, at the very least, it'll be a fun special with Silent and Clement, you know, at the very least. So that's pretty much it. And then, of course, after that, of course, will be the Sun and Moon anime and the Sun and Moon games. And I'm really trying hard to ignore the leaks as well as the anime, which I've already kind of mentioned. I said that wrong in regards to my notes. So hopefully I so hopefully I will be able to finish my intro that I'm am working on which is a remake of the current intro that you're getting and then I have another intro which is completely different and maybe you'll choose between it or maybe I'll alternate between the two to break up the modicum so that's what I'm working on now if you're kinda wondering why my videos are like far and far between it's really hard to find the time I guess you could say to record videos because of all the technical issues that I've had and stuff it, it, it they're not serious technical issues they're not really preventing me they're just like kind of taking away time for me to be able to make these particular videos you know sometimes my computer crashes or something like that programs are incredibly slow the editing software that I use is very slow and stuff and you know exporting and rendering and stuff that takes a while like just as long as the videos are so that's why I'm really slow on these particular videos is because I just haven't found the time you know and editing has been tedious and stuff and I'm not looking forward to editing my Grand Ninja release review because I'm going I was very salty as you probably are already aware uh, and also I'm not really looking forward to trying to edit my opening I have a few choices in regards to that I recorded I'm not entirely happy for whatever reason, when I did the intro that you see saw maybe at the beginning of this particular video, the intro that I usually have, for whatever reason, I can never duplicate how good that intro actually is. I mean, I didn't like it. There were problems that I had with it, but I was still have never been able to duplicate something that I am happy with. I don't know if that's because... I'm the creator, and the creator always is critical of his own or her own work. You know, that might be the situation or whatever, but I have some options, and hopefully they'll be good. I'll also have some joke openings, hopefully. You know, things that I found extremely amusing, but nothing that I really want the intro unless you want that or whatever. So there's that, you know... Uh, I don't. Uh, I will try and hopefully work on some Sun and Moon information in regards to the games, but spoilers are everywhere, and some things I've been spoiled about that I'm not too happy about. 
things that are in the titles of people's videos. Thumbnails are okay. At least I, that's what I thought. You know, because thumbnails had things out of context or whatever. You know, th there are some things that I'm okay with spoiling. New moves, I honestly don't care. Exclusive Z moves, I don't care about that. I don't care about if I'm spoiled like that. That is perfectly a-okay. You know, I didn't like the data mine leaks in regards to the games being really leaked because of the data mine of the demo. But it's spoilers that I'm okay with because I would like to think that that's not all there is. I still haven't heard anything about that. I'm really hoping there's more to the games than what was data mined. Hopefully, maybe, you know, but, you know, certain plot details, uh, certain characters and their revelations or whatever, those are the things that I did not want to get spoiled and I kind of got spoiled a little bit and I'm not happy in regards to them. Not saying that I have a problem with those particular things that were spoiled, but the fact that they're spoiled means that I'm not going to be able to enjoy Sun and Moon as much as I would like to because a lot of it has been spoiled for me. You know, I'm sure there will be some things that I wasn't aware of, but it's just whatever, so I will maybe make a video. I will need to be working on Will Ash Catch This Pokemon number three with all the information that we've got and whether and then also add an Alolan form version of it on the other hand. Of course, a lot of that will depend on typings and... That's pretty much it. Maybe even names or whatever. So that's pretty much this particular video. Sorry, it's a little bit longer than usual. There's some stuff that I had to say in regards to that. And I also apologize that my other videos are a lot more outdated at, that I've recorded a long time ago, but have yet to completely edit them. One, one review has been completely edited completely and is ready to be uploaded technically it's just that I haven't got around to it because I want to upload it along with other videos uh, other epic videos as well so that's all I'm going to say in regards to that so anyway thank you for watching I'm Dustin Benzel and I will see you in my next video goodbye